we find wood underground in what's called an aquifer and we characterize that aquifer in two ways what is the porosity of the aquifer and what is the permeability of the aquifer the porosity is a percent void space we can talk about it in terms of the volume of void space it's all the open spaces within that unit underground where the water is residing different rock types are going to have different porosities okay and porosity can be a primary porosity that forms when that rock unit forms but we can also have secondary porosity that forms later in the life of that rock an example of primary porosity would be like the rock unit at the top of this stratigraphic column and that is a vesicular basalt where that basalt cooled and crystallized with gases in it that left those void spaces so those spaces are the open void spaces that give a vesicular basalt its porosity the opposite end of that spectrum says 20 percent void space <clears throat> if we go down here to the bottom of the stratigraphic column there's a granite on the right and that granite has less than one percent void space so the original granite when it cools and crystallizes you're going to have those interlocking grains in no space a secondary porosity could come around if that granite is fractured the same thing is true for uh, this metamorphic rock kind of like squiggly lines there a metamorphic rock also is not going to have um it's going to have very little pore space if we go up the stratigraphic column these uh, porosities change for these different sedimentary units a conglomerate is going to have 30 percent void space that's a lot of void space 50 percent would be half of the rock is air this is 30 percent of that rock is air or space between the big um, pebbles in the conglomerate above that a poorly sorted sandstone 15 percent that's would look like this rock here where there's two or three um, sand sizes maybe a coarse sand a medium sand and a fine sand giving 15 percent pore space a well sorted aeolian sand may have just one grain size and because of that like in the image here all of those grains may be touching each other but there's going to be a fair amount of space in between them going up to a shale the words over here a shale it's going to have five percent pore space a shale is going to have platy minerals just use my credit cards that are sitting here where a bunch of um plates don't look at the numbers are um flat and so there may be space between those plates but there's um not a lot of space because they can kind of stack up together okay a limestone 25 percent pore space limestones usually have solution cavities and solution cavities would be a secondary porosity okay so um, porosity may decrease with burial compaction so as that unit gets squeezed by the overlying units the porosity can decrease and with cementation if there's percolating fluids precipitating out minerals between the grains that porosity can really drop especially for something like a, a, a well sorted aeolian sand could get a real decrease in porosity if there's minerals deposited between those clasts okay secondary porosity then would be forming like in that granite you have to fracture it <clears throat> and then the fractures become a percent of void space in this image these are uh, limestones that are eroding down the fractures and giving it more and more pore space over time so fracturing faulting dissolution all can give secondary porosity the other term i mentioned is permeability so permeability is not something we can really put a number on it is just a qualitative way to describe the interconnectedness of those void spaces how easy does water flow through that material 
Highly permeable materials allow water to flow readily. A low permeability would mean it doesn't flow very readily. The, um, there is a term we can use to quantify permeability that goes along with porosity, and that's hydraulic conductivity, but it's beyond the scope of this course. So porosity, permeability, porosity we can put a number on because it's percent of void space. Permeability, we just say it high or low. If we went a step further, we could use hydraulic conductivity, but we're not going to.